It's no secret that we are huge fans of the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6, but what if you're looking for something with just a little bit more panache and style? Enter the Genesis GV60. Along with the G80 electrified sedan, the GV60 crossover marks the brand's first steps toward full electrification. With a robust eGMP platform and a stylish, classy interior, the Genesis GV60 just might be your next zero emissions SUV. For the latest in EV news and reviews, including a deep dive of the G80 Electrified, please be sure to subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media. Now, back to the GV60. Here at the front, the GV60 is immediately recognizable as a Genesis product, thanks to the four lines headlights and a big shield-shaped grille. However, on the GV60, that grille has been relocated very low on the front bumper rather than in between the headlights like you might find on the G80 Electrified, for example. And that's because Genesis wanted this car to stand out even among its own lineup. Yes, this car definitely looks like a product from the South Korean luxury automaker, but it's far from a copy-paste job of the GV70. From the side especially, the GV60 has a look all its own. Now, admittedly, there are some carryover design cues like this clamshell hood that came from the GV70, but otherwise, this car stands out significantly from other vehicles in the Genesis lineup, as well as the other two SUVs based on the eGMP architecture. Instead of those cars' bold creases and aggressive shapes, this is much more seamless and graceful and softer contoured. There are a few little details that keep the GV60 from looking too boring. For example, there's a pretty cool little chrome daylight opening that fittingly punctuates in a lightning bolt motif right here. And then on the back, there's a gloss black ducktail spoiler that helps the rear end keep from feeling too droopy. My favorite feature, however, are this Performance Model's 21-inch wheels. If you'll read Jeff Perez's review on Motor One, you'll see that he thought that they looked kind of cartoony, almost like a Hot Wheels or something like that. But to be honest, that's why I like them. This car just looks so bombastic and planted with this crazy wheel design at all four corners. Around back, there are a few more clues that you're looking at a Genesis. Most obviously, this big full width word mark that spans the distance between the two lines taillights like you'd find on any other Genesis. Taken as a whole, the Genesis GV60 definitely has softer contours compared to its stablemates from Hyundai and Kia, and that might not be to everyone's liking. But at the same time, it still has a few little details that liven up the design and keep it from looking boring like a melted bar of soap. It's definitely polarizing. I'm not sure if I like it, I'm not sure if I hate it, but I will say this, every time I see one driving down the road, I like it a little bit more. Thankfully, the GV60's interior needs no qualifiers thanks to elegant materials, clever design features, and a robust technology package. A completely flat floor provides a sense of space, and a high seating position and low cut windows give you plenty of forward and side visibility. As on the exterior, you can see an abundance of rounded design elements, including the steampunk chic door handles, wing spoke steering wheel, and a crystal ball that rotates to become the gear selector. Materials are great, with the standard GV60's leather upholstery giving way to this performance model's Napa hides. And Genesis has done a masterful job of disguising the cabin's cheaper surfaces with a fun fish scale texture. As on other Genesis products, there's a 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster with a matching 12.3-inch infotainment display, and it all works very well. It runs a similar software as the Hyundai and Kia products, but there's a dedicated Genesis skin that helps it feel very premium and luxurious. Unfortunately, no model in the GV60's lineup comes with wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You need a wired connection. But at the very least, Genesis has seen the light and they now equip this car with USB-C chargers instead of the slower USB-A units. Now, once you're out on the road, you won't be too surprised to learn that the Genesis GV60 feels a little bit like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6, thanks to their shared platforms and wheelbases. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though, because they all benefit from pretty good road manners and body control. This is a pretty comfortable place to spend a daily commute. Furthermore, the GV60 has the same wonderful iPedal, one-pedal driving system as those other two vehicles. It's so intuitive and easy to use. There's these paddle shifters behind the steering wheel that allow you to dial in exactly how much regen you want from a pure coast to true one pedal driving that will actually bring you down to a stop. It's a great way to make sure you're making the most out of every last ounce of energy in that battery while also giving you some additional stopping power. Speaking of slowing down, the Genesis GV60 Performance does have one pretty cool ace up its sleeve relative to the GV60 Advance. There's an upsized braking package that works together with that one pedal driving to give you all the stopping power you need just in case you overcook it into a corner like I'm about to. 
Helping keep you on the right path is the GV60 Performance's standard electronically controlled suspension with road preview. What that means is there's a camera on the car that senses road irregularities up ahead and actively softens the suspension when you hit those obstacles, giving you a nice smooth ride without sacrificing body control. The active dampers also adapt to your driving style in one of three modes, eco, comfort, and sport. And once you thumb the drive controller over to sport, you are gifted with 429 glorious horsepower. However, if that's not enough for you, there's this beautiful lime green button on the steering wheel marked boost. Hit that and you're rewarded with 486 horsepower for up to 10 seconds at a time, which is perfect for executing a two lane pass or a risky freeway merge, or just putting a smile on your passenger's face. Now what's most surprising is how transformed the GV60 feels once you do put it into sport mode. The accelerator response is much more immediate, giving you more control over the vehicle's fore-aft balance in the middle of a corner. And the one-pedal driving does make it easier to slow down before you hit that apex. And the suspension itself feels much more willing to play than it does in top-spec versions of the Ionic 5 or the EV6. This is just much more fun to drive and more willing to kind of dance with you on a two-lane road like the legendary Angeles Crest Highway. There is some added weight to the steering when you put it in sport mode, but it's not enough to compensate for the fact that there's just no information coming through the wheel. I'm driving pretty close to the limit, which admittedly isn't very high given this vehicle is riding on all season rubber instead of dedicated performance tires, but that doesn't change the fact that I can hear the wheels scrubbing out before I can feel them. It's kind of a bummer given that this car has the word performance in the name, but apparently if you're not Porsche, it's just too difficult to build an EV with a chatty talkative steering rack. Now, like any Genesis worth its salt, the GV60 comes absolutely stuffed with active safety features, and most of it is standard. That means you get forward collision warning with pedestrian detection, automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, lane centering, and highway drive assist too. What that means is that in addition to your usual lane centering tech and adaptive cruise control, HDA2 will take into account the positions of other vehicles in their lanes. So if someone is edging in on that dotted white line up ahead, the Genesis GV60 will compensate by cheating just a little bit over to give that car just a bit more space. And to the surprise of absolutely no one, it all works very well together. Highway Drive Assist is one of the best active driver assistance technologies in the industry, and adding that little two to its name only makes it better. Now, once you've had your fun out on the open road and it's time to recharge this thing, the Genesis GV60 will leave you with an open battery after about seven and a half hours using a household wall box. However, one of the benefits of the eGMP platform shared with the Hyundai Ionic 5 and Kia EV6 is an 800 volt architecture that accepts a DC fast charge rate of up to 350 kilowatts. If you're lucky enough to find one of those fast chargers, you can expect a 10 to 80% charge in 18 minutes, one of the fastest speeds of any electric vehicle on the market today. On the more commonly available level two charging, you can expect a 10 to 80% charge in 48 minutes or so. Once that battery is fully replenished, the Genesis GV60 Performance will cover 235 miles on a single charge. If you don't need the extra power and you're okay with smaller wheels and brakes, the Genesis GV60 Advance can cover 248 miles on a charge. However, it has to be said that both of those numbers are slightly down on the cheaper Hyundai Ionic 5 dual motor, which can cover 256 miles as rated by the EPA. The Genesis GV60 definitely benefits from the advancements that have been made in the EV space over the last couple of years. Lightning fast charging, excellent performance, and a spacious, comfortable interior. With a base price of $58,890, however, I'm not totally sure that the GV60 is worth the extra cost compared to a similarly equipped Hyundai Ionic 5 that actually has a longer range on the freeway. However, if you're gonna spend the money on a Genesis EV, I definitely think you should go for the GV60 performance model, which has some palpable real world updates that make it more fun to drive on a daily commute and actually pretty hilarious on a twisty canyon road. With a base price of $67,890, this particular vehicle costs just over 70 grand when you account for the matte white paint and the destination charge. That's definitely a lot of money to spend, but you can't put a price on performance if that's your absolute goal. Thanks for watching.